What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and this is... So on today's episode of Becoming Star-Lord, uh, we're talking about making Star-Lord's helmet. So, starting off with construction, uh, this model is by Joe Props. It uh, clamshells open like that. So it kind of, it's got tabs right here that kind of slot in to the helmet like that. And that kind of snaps together. Um, yeah, so there you go. As you can see, it's got the really cool eyes right there. We've got the LEDs inside. I'll be showing you guys how to do that in this video, as well as some tips and tricks for things that I learned while making this. So for this video, um, since I already have the finished piece, I'm going to be using a uh, another print that I printed off that was too small for my head, uh, just so I can demonstrate some, some techniques and whatnot for you guys. So to start off, uh, I normally start off with a very low grit sandpaper, so like 80 grit. Um, and I basically start hitting all of the flattest areas where I know I can just start removing print lines. As you can see, this is a really bad quality print. I also printed this one at like a really high layer height. But yeah, you can see there's like, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but when you sand it, the more of those high spots will start to go away. You can definitely make a print even with this heavy of like, you know, print lines, you can still make this look good. Kind of going over all the areas. I know if you get a if you get a palm sander, that would probably be really good for hitting all of spots like these. So you can get them really nice and smooth. Smooth. Uh, I know frankly built, he talks a lot about using palm sanders when finishing 3D print. If you print off your prints at a much smaller layer height, you won't have as much problems of like having really sort of groovy prints like where you can feel it. Not, not groovy as in good, groovy as in <laughs> there are grooves in the print. You can see the layer lines are all, you know, they're pretty thick, but you know, So once you've sanded it down to a point where you're happy, um, you can start to fill prime. So this is Duplicolor Filler Primer. Uh, I've found that it works a lot better compared to uh, the Rust-Oleum Fill Primer. Um, so yeah, and this stuff you can really put on quite heavy. You can lay this stuff on thick. So basically you kind of just start to get up real close. Don't really worry about drippage or, you know, whatever, because you can sand it down. So yeah, there we go. You know, I'm really quite thick. And so, yeah, there we go. Um, I guess I'm going to head the other side. So it should be even coverage all the way around. We're trying not to use this, uh, as much of this because uh, I do still need it for my other projects. So, yeah, there we go. You get the idea. So once your part is done drying, um, you can start to sand it again. Uh, I like to move up in the grits just a little bit. Um, this is a 220 grit sandpaper, uh, because the more you sand it down, the smoother it'll get. And so you don't want to be cutting into that, that coat as much. You want to be just smoothing down the high spots, smoothing down the high spots. Yeah. Show you a little bit more close up here. You really want to be pretty rough with this because 220 is still not a super. You can see my sandpaper is a little dirty. I was sanding some bondo. So already I'm feeling it's it's already getting a lot smoother. Um, it's still not perfect, but 
especially this area is getting, you know, like that's pretty good. And you essentially want to repeat this process probably about three or four times. I think that's about what I did. I think I did it three times. I do one coat or sand it down, then do one coat of fill primer, sand with this grit. Um, do another coat, sand with this grit again, and then do one last coat and then I'd wet sand it. And so wet sanding is basically if you have a bucket of water and you put this piece in it, fill it up with some water and you use a pretty high grit sandpaper, like 600 grit, and then you can sand it until it's really smooth. Wet sanding just helps for particles not to build up on the sandpaper. So, um, but for this, the grit is so, it's such a, a low grit that it doesn't really matter. Sometimes if the layer lines are really, um, really sort of visible still at this stage, you can go in with an 80 grit and just kind of go back in and really sort of knock it down. Or you can go in with something a little finer, like 120. Uh, I use my 120 sandpaper a lot. I just don't have that out here at the moment. Yeah, see, that's really starting to kind of knock that down. So painting the helmet, um, the entire helmet is, uh, the base layer of it is this Tamiya color uh, TS-38. Uh, it's a really nice gunmetal color and it looks really close to the one they used in the movie. Um, and then for the gold and the silver parts, I actually airbrush them. So I use these two paints, these are not airbrush paints, but if you mix them with water they get really they, you know, they thin down really well and they're not flaky at all. So they make really good airbrush colors. I kind of just mix these two to get, um, a, you know, a gold color that I was happy with. It's pretty close to the movie. And then for the silver, I use this Wicked Colors, uh, silver. So yeah. So for the sake of this video, um, I'm just gonna paint this. I would definitely do at least, you know, two, three more coats of fill primer and at least a couple more hours of sanding, including wet sanding before painting this. But for the sake of this video, I'll show you guys some painting. So here I have my Tamiya Color TS-38. Uh, this is a fantastic color and I really like it for Star-Lord. So essentially we'll just kind of start uh, doing on thin coats and I believe that this can is running up. So I will be right back. So I'm back, <laughs> another Tamiya TS-38 here. Uh, and basically I'll just start spraying. I do pretty light coats and stuff. I think I did about two coats. And you're just kind of lightly, you know, kind of just dusting it. So for Star Lord's eyes, um, here's what I found worked. It, it looks pretty close to how I think the the movie one would work, but essentially there's four layers of material and then a casing. So this is the sort of socket, I guess you could call it. This this goes in into the eye. Um, here I'll show you guys. So that kind of goes into that right there. This kind of just fits inside there. Um, and then there's a blue tinted layer right here. Uh, so that when the red LEDs are on, you're not seeing red all the time and it kind of just makes it like a pair of sunglasses. And then um, a layer of mesh, you can see, to kind of give it that texture. That's what the movie one had. And then I also just put a piece of clear plastic over. Uh, over the front of it. So for the clear plastic, um, use uh, PET G sheets. Uh, that that should work. Uh, but you can use any plastic that you have lying around. But I'll leave. I'll try and leave a link for something you could use in the description. I'll also leave a link for where I got that. Or if you really wanted to, uh, you could use a red tint over the front. 
which it does look good, but at the same time, it makes it a lot harder to see, I found, so I don't really recommend doing that. But essentially, how you construct this is you get blue, blue on the back, and then you put, um, you thread the, the LED strip through this, and then you kind of just stick it down or glue it to um, the ring. Let me see if we can get that kind of looking good. There we go. So yeah, you can see then it's all kind of flush with the ring and you can't really, you, you can see it when the lights are on, but it's not that big of a deal. The movie when you could see the, the LEDs as well. So I think it looks really cool. And it gives you that really nice glowing eye effect. One thing I forgot to mention is that to get the mesh look, I used this mesh tape. Now, I originally used it because I thought I was being clever, and when I cut out this mesh, it has an adhesive backing. I thought I could just stick it right on to the plastic. I could go like that. Unfortunately, that's not how it works, and the glue adhesive backing that they use is, um, it's pretty, it's pretty, like, fogged, I guess you could say, when it's on the the plastic part. Um, so what I did is I just cut out a circle and then I, you can peel off the backing, like the, or the, just the adhesive part. And so I just glued it straight to the, to the, um, the socket. And then the battery pack just goes in the, where, where your chin rests and you can kind of tuck the wires away. I got to figure out how to kind of attach these wires to the face plate, make sure they're not in my face, but yeah. So there's the helmet. There's how it looks when it's on and yeah. I think that looks really cool. For the batteries, um, I used this, uh, I think it's about three volts uh, battery pack. It takes two AAAs. And you essentially just put these wires into either this or the, um, the splitter. So you essentially just put these in, line up the red and the black one, the wires. Don't worry about the white wire. You line up those two, whoops, wrong side. And you put that in there and you can kind of just like tape it. Uh, that's what I did for mine. You just put those in there and then you can electrical tape it like that and you should be good to go. Here's one more look at the inside where you can really see. So here's the wires. Um, here's the wires for the um, focus. There we go. Here are the wires that connect to the eyes. And then right here is where the battery pack and that splitter join. And you kind of, you can see, I kind of just taped it together. There are probably much fancier methods of doing this, but that works just fine for me. And then when you switch it on, see the LEDs in there, light up. So assembling this helmet is pretty straightforward. Um, there's basically four main pieces, so there's Face plate one, there's two sides, right there, right there, and then there's a back plate. And the back plate is removable. There we go. And there are essentially tabs that go into those slots. After that, there's three tubes on each side. One, two, oh wait, hang on. One, two, three on both sides. And then also three tubes that go in the cheeks. One, two, three. Um, and there's two tubes on the face here, two tubes on the chin, and then a couple little screens that I just printed off and put in there. Those do not come with the original model. You could probably use some metal screens like bug screen, and that would probably work really well too. But yeah, that's just what I did for mine. I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of people asking me this in the comments. Uh, this model was by Joe Props on Instagram. Um, he is a fantastic modeler and he has great communication. Highly recommend getting your model from him. Uh, it does cost money, so I will leave a free alternative in the description. Um, I definitely recommend doing this one though, because this is probably the most accurate file that you can buy currently for Star-Lord. So final thoughts for this helmet. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out. You can see here, the finish is really nice and you know, it's got a really cool metallic gloss to it, as well as the gold. Yeah, and the eyes. I'm super happy with how the eyes came out. 
but yeah, hopefully you guys learned something and uh, thank you guys for watching.